Welcome. We're so happy to be back on campus yes. and have everybody here. If you're local, we're grateful that you're with us. If you're regularly online, <laughs> we love having you there as well. Karen and I are so sorry that we're not with you this today. As you know, uh, Karen and I and Aria have all had COVID and we are still in our quarantine. The good news is we're all doing much better thanks to the prayers and all the good support we've received. So we will definitely be back with you next week. Yes, and um, we're so grateful to our Adventures in Spirit committee for this year Welcome. led by We're our incredible so co-chairs Daniel Jackson and, and, and practitioner Cindy Young here and the rest of the team and all that they've done and that they're going to speak from their heart today to share how our principles our practices and what this community means to them and what we can do together and we also want to thank Joe Tinker for joining them as well and thanks to everybody who helped make it possible for us to open our doors this Sunday. We look forward to seeing you. See you soon. Bye. What are you doing? I'm painting a new picture for myself. I'm creating some new things in my life. I'm painting outside the line. You really are missing a lot of that canvas. How are you able to do me, that? I'm a new man in my life right over here. <laughs> well, there he is. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. I'm Cindy Young. And I'm Daniel Jackson, and we're your co-chairs uh, this year for the Adventures in Spirit 2022 campaign, Painting a New Picture. And we're getting our iPad up here. It doesn't recognize my face right now, so there's the code. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is the time of year when we get together and we talk about what our center means to us, how it influences our daily lives, but how it gives so much and spiritually feeds all of us. And that what we can do to make a financial commitment to the center to keep it vibrant, to keep it robust, to keep it transforming lives and bringing a life that works for everyone to each of us and to our community and to the world. So uh, this summer, the co-spiritual directors um, uh, recruited an AIS committee for this campaign for 2022. Um, that's comprised of members of this community that put into practice the laws of prosperity in their lives and in this community. And I'm very, very excited to uh, introduce those people that are on the team. Uh, I don't think all of them are in the sanctuary today, but those that are, please stand so you can be recognized. Uh, first, we have our beloved Carl Thomas, who's standing right here. <laughs> Heidi Williams, who's in the back. Fran and Dale Morgan, who weren't able to be here today, Randy Craig, Lynn Hayes, Tariq Rogers, and then our fearless and inspirational leader is Reverend Karen Fry, who's also not here today, but she has been a real driving force behind putting this campaign together this year, and we really appreciate her direction. Thank you, Cindy. Every year in October, um, we at the center dedicate ourselves to reinvigorating our understanding of how the law of circulation works in our lives. That giving and receiving, that constant eternal flow of good that emanates from within and out pictures as a manifestation of good, of, of uh, experience, of love. And we're painting a new picture because we want to paint outside the lines and bring a new intention to our community, to the world, and to make sure that no one is left behind, that all hearts are lifted, that consciousness is lifted to good um, through our endeavors here at CSL Dallas and through how we take it up in our own lives. Um, over the course of the next four, four weeks, four years, uh, <clears throat> That's something else. That's the political arena every four years. But over the course of the next four weeks, 
uh, we'll be sharing the uh, priorities for CSL Dallas and um, discussing each week a different component of what our intentions are for uh, the Center for 2022. And we encourage you to become uh, an important part of that discussion in that process and how we move forward as a community into the new year. Yeah, and so as we've mentioned, the 2022 theme is painting a new picture, which is our ability to create new experiences in our life and expand our consciousness beyond what it is today and, and releasing those limiting beliefs that we place in our lives. So why don't you join us in painting a new picture for prosperous living uh, in your individual lives as well as the community. We can paint you know, a new picture of community because things, a lot of things have changed in the last several years or a new picture of how we support each other through this time or a new picture of prosperity in the community and how we reach other people, how we expand and grow as a community out into the world, how we impact other people. There's just no limits to the, to the things that we can paint together. And um, I just wanna say, it's so great to be back in the center and back together. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, hallelujah, you know? And we're back for good, we're back for good. So I can say just from standing here to everyone that's online, this is amazing, come back. You know, we need everyone uh, that wants to to come back. I think it's a safe environment. Everyone feels really good. And so it's good to see everybody that showed up today. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> but the first step in our campaign that we wanna take is to acknowledge that when we make a pledge, when we make a commitment to CSL Dallas, we are establishing a belief. And that establishment of that belief goes into the law, as we all know and understand, and manifests as abundance, as prosperity. And it lifts that prosperity consciousness that so many of us want. It takes us out of fear. It takes us out of financial insecurity or, or the have not mentality or, or won't have or aren't worthy into that richness of abundance that, that spirit is. It's your birthright. It's that prosperity consciousness that we, that we move into as we make that commitment to, uh, to, the, um, to the center. And when we make that commitment, you don't have to, you know, it's not like, okay, I need to write a check right now. You're making that commitment for 2022 and you're setting your intention for how uh, abundance and prosperity is going to show up in your life and it will all be done. Your bills will be paid, your house will be the way you want it to be, your life will be abundant and prosperous in each way that you imagine and you'll be able to make that commitment to CSL Dallas. Um, believing is the first step um, but if you not, did not receive all the information on the uh, campaign, we've sent out the newsletters. Um, some of you may have got them this weekend. I got mine on Saturday. Uh, but if you haven't received any of that information, we do have a table uh, in the breezeway. And then you can also visit us online at csldallas.org slash pledge. Yeah, and one of the things that the committee has been doing um, each week since the summer is really spending time praying over the prosperity of each individual in this community, as well as the prosperity of the center itself. And we will continue that over the course of the next several weeks as we walk through this campaign, knowing the expansion of prosperity for everyone. And we are dedicating to seeing every one of you live a prosper prosperous life um, and for the community to continue to expand and grow. We're very excited about that. One of the, um, the most um, mm, inspiring or beautiful parts of our campaign every year is to hear from members, is to hear from the heart, from someone in our community that has experienced abundance, prosperity, transformation because of what CSL Dallas means to them. And so I'd like to invite Carl Thomas up to share how the center has inspired him and how he is inspired to uh, give back. Carl. You know, uh, is it on? Oh, okay. You know, the only reason I volunteered to do this is because I knew I'd get to take off my mask. <laughs> and, and Daniel, a word of advice, when an extrovert says, how long do I have? Don't tell him as much as you want. <laughs> but I will be succinct. Um, 
For me, CSL, two things come to mind when I think of what I have gotten here and what I get here, and one is healing and the other is optimism. Uh, this place came to me at a time when I needed it most, and this space is what I would call a sacred space, a healing space, but it's very different from anything I'd ever experienced because it's an impersonal love. And what I mean is, I could come here, be here in this space, and receive the love and healing that I needed, and it isn't like it came from me, from you, from you, from you. It was here, and I could have as much of it as I wanted, as much as I needed, because there was no limit. Um, after about a year of that, it surprised me, because I was hearing some people talk, and one man said, yeah, I go into the sanctuary and I just cry, and I thought, I thought I was the only one. And the only thing I can conclude is that after years and decades of being here and all of us coming here and pouring forth, that it, independent of us, fills this space. So the sacred healing is something that has meant a lot to me. The other thing is I get to come here and be with a room full of optimists. Now, pessimists are welcome to come. The caveat is you will soon become an optimist if you stay here. So those are the two main things that CSL means to me. Uh, so I want to talk to you about, for me, tithing and pledging because they're two separate things. And you have to understand, I uh, really never did this before CSL. And um, for the first few months, I thought of it, what I wanted, as a selfish thing because I wanted something from tithing. And what I wanted from tithing is I wanted to change my relationship with money, my personal relationship. I knew that if I gave, it would come back to me. I knew all of that. You see, before tithing, if someone were to say, well, COVID's been going on, how's business? I would have said, business is great. But if they said, are you making enough money? I would say, no, I'm not making enough money. And they'd say, well, what do you mean? Business is great. Why aren't you making, it's never enough. And so this process and tithing helped me understand that, for instance, if I'm blessed with enough to take care of myself, or perhaps I'm blessed with enough to take care of myself and my family, or maybe I'm blessed even further and I can take care of myself and my family and my children's children, at some point in there, I have to admit to myself that I have abundance in money and that in truth my cup runneth over. And so I came to it with that, but not having tithed before, I have, I know y'all don't have this problem, I get resistance to new things. You know, so this giving 10%, this, I, I had to work through that. And uh, so as a result of it, my relationship changed my personal relationship changed with money. Now, pledging was a whole different animal because I had said, okay, I'll tithe, I'll give my 10%. Uh, when it came to pledging, what came up for me was, well, I'm giving 10%, why do I have to make a pledge? You know, well, if I'm gonna make a pledge, then you don't get my 10%, you only get what you get in the pledge. It worked its way out. What it took me a year or so to figure out is the reason the pledge is important to CSL is because the whole annual budget of next year is based on the pledges. And it gave me great comfort to know that I'm participating in a center where they're financially responsible. We manifest and we can spend what we manifest. And if we want to spend more, then we must manifest more. And so it gave me that greater understanding of why I, it, why I wanted to pledge, why it was good for me to pledge. Because I also, they say pledge where you receive your spiritual substance, but I wanted more. I wanted to pledge to a place that I knew was doing good. CSL ties 10% of what it gets out to the community, which we all vote on. My pledge helps keep this center running. My pledge helps pay for our ministers. 
My pledge helps pay for the staff. It helps when we outreach to other people and other things. So to me, it was a whole learning process that really took two or three years um, because we don't really stand up here and say, we did this good, we did this good. I had just had to hear it as it came along. So um, that's really the reason I pledge. That is the reason I, I tithe. And um, that's really about it. Thank you. Um, thanks very much. Thank you, Carl. Beautiful. Thank you. That was just great, Carl. Thank you for sharing. Um, so I thought I'd share just a little bit about my journey with sacred giving, just as Carl, Carl did. When I first came in the doors about 12 years ago, um, I came in the spring and, and I had just started foundations when the first AIS campaign was kicked off. And I have to tell you, coming from a you know, childhood of just putting whatever change you had into the basket, it was very uncomfortable and scary for me. I just really, I, the whole idea of it, the whole concept was just not in my wheelhouse and I was very uncomfortable. And I didn't, I didn't do anything with it that first year. I just sat with it. And as I went through foundations, I started understanding the, the, the law of circulation and I thought, okay, I'll start actually writing a check and putting it in the basket. That was like a big step for me. It was a small step, but it was a big step. And the next year, I actually took the, 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 the time and, and made the commitment. It was a small commitment, but it was a pledge just the same. It was, it was really hard. I had to overcome the idea of making a commitment to a spiritual community because that's what that represented for me, is that making, right, filling out that pledge card was a commitment. And that was the, the part of my journey where I decided I was going to become a member of this community. And then each year I started going up a little bit more and listening to the messages that came. And, and one of the messages that really, really um, made an impact to me was, was one that Joe Tinker gave several years ago, which was, you know, I tithe more I, each year I up my game because what I found is that the more that I put out there in my pledge, it always demonstrates. And so I started going a little further than what my tithe should be in anticipation of that coming back to me. And each and every time, just, you know, whatever I went above and beyond came back to me in, in, in income every single year. It was amazing. And the one year that I decided, no, I'm not going to go up, guess what? My income didn't go up either. So there's this, this definite relationship between, you know, what I, what I, mental picture I have of my prosperity and what gets returned to me. And, and I'm going to, I know that I've told this story to a few people already, but you know, this last year I worked for Expedia Group. You know, we're in a pandemic. You know, everything looks extraordinarily dire from the, in the travel industry. Not only were we not making money, we were giving back money for canceled trips. Um, you know, there were cuts being made. We weren't uncertain about what was going to happen. But we, when we hit October, you know, I said, you know, I, my first reaction was, I'm not going up on my pledge this year because I don't know what's going to happen. And then I stopped myself. I thought, is that really true? Is that, is that, is that the picture that I want to paint for myself? You know, prosperity can come in a lot of forms. So, you know, that doesn't have to be true for me. So I took a leap of faith knowing and trusting in my spiritual tools using spiritual mind treatment, releasing the old beliefs, and I upped my pledge. And guess what? Guess what happened? I got a promotion. The company, even though it wasn't doing well, found a way to give a bonus, even though they weren't performing in the form of stock in a deferred way. Uh, they also decided that the bonus potential that we had been getting every year, they were just going to incorporate that into the base salary of every employee. So despite the fact that the company wasn't doing well, my prosperity continued to grow as I set that intention. And it came back far greater than what I even anticipated. So that is the beauty of the, what we teach here. That is painting a new picture because I stopped myself from the old ideas of lack and fear 
in the midst of a pandemic and painted a new picture and said, no, that's not true for me. And I set that intention and behind it was the belief that that was what was gonna happen. And that is, happens every single time. And I just can't tell you how, how excited it makes me to share this with you. And I wanna take a moment to now turn this over to Joe Tinker so he can speak to you because he is a master at the spiritual principles of prosperity. And I'm excited to listen to him every time. <laughs> well, thank you, Cindy. Let's give a hand to Cindy. I was very pleased when uh, Reverend Karen asked if I would be willing to speak to our theme, uh, painting a new picture. And I hadn't, uh, hadn't heard the theme till recently, but I got pretty excited because some of you know that I do get involved with the arts ministry here and uh, we do variety shows, we do talent shows, we, do, uh, we play the Grinch at Christmas, we do all kinds of things that are a lot of fun. Um, and Kirby, your time is coming. You will not escape me. We will be working together coming up now that we're open uh, again. So I was excited about the arts element of it. And then it turns out, well, y'all in my private life, I'm also a project manager. And so I was like, okay, well, how do we do that? How do we paint a new picture? What are the steps? What do we need to do? What's A, B, C, D, E? And I can project manage the crap out of anything. So I started thinking, you know, what do we have to do? And I made a little list, okay? Um, what do we need if we're gonna paint a new picture? We need a canvas, okay? We need a canvas. And the canvas is, in this case, our lives. We already have it, it's freely given. The picture that we're making, we will see because we will be in it. We'll be walking through it, living in it, being as it. So we have a canvas. The beautiful thing about the canvas too is that Sometimes we might not think that we necessarily like the way the canvas looks right now, which is why we're talking about painting a new picture. Guess what? Bright, new, white, clean, fresh canvas is free and we can start all over anytime we want. So we do have our canvas. That's the first thing we need. Then what does an artist need? The artist needs an easel. So the easel is the support for the canvas, right? It holds it up. And guess what that is? That's the law. That's the law holding up the easel. I mean, the easel is the law holding up the canvas because it is a law. If I leave my studio and I come back in a couple of days, that easel is still gonna be holding up that canvas. The easel's not gonna be hanging from the light shade and the canvas is not gonna have turned into rubber and be a doormat now. I mean, these things are absolutely still the law. And when I come back to it, it's there ready for me. So it's up to me how much I interact with it but it is the law, so thank you to the easel. Then we need the palette. I looked at some pictures and it was in some of the promotional materials. This is the, this is the little plate for the artist with the colors on it. We need the palette. Okay, the palette is where the paint is gonna go, right? So the palette, I saw that as like, that's our consciousness. This is my own awareness. I, I, I have this thing. I don't necessarily have anything on it yet, but I do get to help choose what goes on it and I get to choose how I dab it and how I play with it, but how I can receive what goes on that palette is up to me. So there's a consciousness element in the palette. That's my individual awareness. And it also, because we work together, becomes a group awareness. We have a palette and I have a palette, but we also share a larger palette. Then what do we need next to be able to do anything? We need the paint and we need some brushes. And I saw the paint and I said, you know what? That's paint is the inspiration that I get from spirit. And it goes, blah, 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 blah. Look at all these opportunities you have here on the palette. And I can pick up one of my brushes and I can start to use it. But uh, without a palette of consciousness to receive the ideas, the inspirations, meeting the right people, seeing the next opportunity, without a palette that's open and ready, if I'm hiding my palette, here comes the paint all over and I can't see it and I can't use it. But if I have my palette, spirit gives the ideas, spirit gives the impetus, spirit gives the way, spirit gives the means, and we get to have the fun of dabbing in it and painting and creating the picture the way that we want. So I see the, the, the materials of the paint, those are the gifts of spirit, resources of every kind. And then the brushes, as I said, the brushes is, are the mind body and spirit 
in persistent application of our own effort. So we have to be involved. Without the brush, I mean, you could do finger painting, but I think we're, we're going for something with a brush here means that this is my application. This is my persistent effort. It can sit here on the palette. I can acknowledge it. I can, be, I can think it's wonderful. I can be glad to tell everybody about the beautiful paints on my palette. But until I actually become engaged and I'm the one doing it, I'm owning it and I'm jumping into it, then we can actually, I can actually create something. We can create something together. This is, the, the brushes are what we do with it. It's treat and move your feet, as we say at the center. So we learn about it, we grow, we get a palette, we have a lot of paint, now we move our feet, we gotta stick the brush in there and start making some moves. Now, how do we know what we wanna paint? Individually and as a community? Well, that remains to be seen. That we will discover over the next days, weeks, months, and years as we create and recreate our lives. We don't know necessarily right now maybe exactly what, and is that a problem? Maybe do I not know what it is exactly that I want to paint? Not necessarily. It is something I want to get there. I do want to know what I'm creating. I want to be an active part of it, but there may be times when I'm not sure exactly what that is. But I did think of something that would be good to know. How will we know if the painting that we're creating is good? How will we know that we're making progress in creating a painting, a new painting, a new picture for ourselves that is actually supportive of our life, that helps us create a life that works for us and in and, and a world that works for everyone? How do we know that we're really doing that? I picture that if my painting is really good, I'm going to be super, super grateful. I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to feel so fulfilled and satisfied. I'm going to have a tremendous amount of thankfulness and gratitude because of how well it's going. And it's not easy to take a leap from the metaphor of painting into our lives. That is the way we want to feel, isn't it? We want to feel glad. We want to feel grateful. We want to feel blessed. We want to feel these things. And so taking a little bit of a, a cue from our teachings here at the Center for Spiritual Living, then I thought, well, that's really the place to start, isn't it? It's about the feelings of gratitude. And we hear about this in the fall, and I'm going to remind you right now because we teach it here at CSL Dallas. It's about gratitude. That's where we start. No matter what the picture is that we have right now, and even if we've already stretched the brand new white canvas over the frame, I'm starting with gratitude that I have a white, beautiful canvas. Or if I still have a picture that by necessity is full of a lot of things, I'm going to look through there until I can find and magnify and praise those for which I have gratitude now. Gratitude now. Because the universe can only add more to what I'm carrying in my consciousness. I'm attracting in my, in my world that which I'm carrying in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit. So if I'm going to focus on being thankful focus on being grateful and I find the things which I can praise in my life, no matter what all my circumstances are, then what does the universe have to work with with me? More stuff that makes me grateful. I'm showing the universe I'm a gra grateful person. I'm a thankful person. This is what turns me on is feeling grateful and thankful. The universe says, I can help you do that. And more stuff shows up. Blops of paint on the palette and a beautiful painting in life that I can co-create. And so can we all, as a community, when we take these metaphors, we work with them together. So I'm very optimistic about what we can do together as we are painting a new picture at CSL Dallas. <clears throat> a couple of quick things that we can do if you're kind of new, think, oh, boy, I'd like to do that. Gratitude journaling. If you take just a blank notebook and start your day, maybe with your first coffee and Light a little candle, feel good, think of the good things. If it's just that you had hot water in the shower, how awesome is that? Boy, write it down. You love your hot water, you love your air conditioning, you love that your heart is beating today. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Find a way, I like to write them down. I'm, that helps me to actually put pen to paper. You can type it into your device, save it in a note. Meditate on the things for which we are grateful. Uh, a gratitude list works just as well. Just keep piling things onto a list that you pull out. Oh, thought of some more things. Grateful for our cell phone technology. We love that too. 
Um, the, you know, gra the practicing of, of gratitude, it's universally known, and it's even scientifically studied now. There are scientific results shown in control groups that did and did not practice gratitude of, of the ways that lives were improved by those people who did practice gratitude. I encourage you, if you want to know more about how, how can I practice gratitude, do a Google search, highlight the images one, do a grat uh, Google search for practicing gratitude. Ha! It's infinite, the number of all the memes, the posters, the advice, the, uh, everything. Everything you could possibly want to convince yourself, oh yeah, there's an easy way here that I can practice gratitude. Everybody's doing it. We're going to jump on board and make sure that we're doing that too. So that as we paint our new picture, we know that we're going to be filling it with things that enhance our gratitude and our thankful, uh, the way that we live our lives, thankfully. Start with gratitude and practice it every day. Remember what Meister Eckhart said. In closing, I'll quote him. If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. So there we are. Let's work together in painting our new picture at CSL Dallas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joe. Oh, well, here we are back at the beginning. <laughs> I'm Daniel and she's Cindy. And uh, um, here's a quote from Eric Butterfield. I think that's very telling, uh, particularly about what Joe was saying. And that was so beautiful. I love how you, in a short period of time, he really bought into our theme, didn't he? Didn't he bring that alive? Mm -hmm. It was so awesome. Mm -hmm. um, there is only one way in which you can achieve prosperity. It is to take charge of your mind and to paint a new picture, Eric Butterfield. Uh, that really underscores our campaign for this year. Um, prosperity and abundance uh, principle practices, that is what our AIS annual pledge drive is all about. And um, uh, we um, <clears throat> want to uh, talk a little bit about our goals. Um, but before we do that, um, for many of us, we're just coming back now again, second time out of COVID into the sanctuary and you know this latest surge you know gave us uh, pause and we had to put the reset button on you know flood again uh, at the beginning of the year um, set us back and enforced us to be out but now we're back in our center and how beautiful it is i mean i, I haven't um, i don't think any of us have recognized just how incredible the job was done to restore this beautiful center. And um, Brianna Abmeyer, uh, you know, much love to you for all the work that you and your team did. I mean, <clears throat> this is amazing and a true manifestation of how the abundant and prosperity consciousness of CSL Dallas works to bring about uh, such a beautiful uh, manifestation. So our hearts are filled with, um, with being back in the center and just how beautifully it's been restored uh, from the carpet to all the lounges to the beautiful new um, uh, peace room for our practitioners. Um, it's amazing and I encourage everyone on, online to, uh, to get back in and to see all the amazing work that's been done. Another, uh, painting a new picture and, and excuse me, uh, Cindy, while I digress just a little bit mm -hmm. uh, with my own um, account. And I have many that I'll share with you over the next four, four weeks. But particularly close to my heart is that, um, you know, during the pandemic, I got back into science of mind classes. I got into inward journey and I opened up to the idea that, wow, you know, I can now be in a relationship. And it had taken many, many years. Uh, to get there after uh, after my last one. And um, boy, it happened quickly. I, I came out of that. I worked with Cindy. I worked with Sherry. I worked with uh, Christine. And, and wow, you know, the power of prayer and the power of affirmation and working together. I worked with all my beautiful uh, Inward Journey classmates and partners. And now I've manifested the beautiful Gloria. And um, she's here today, and I'm so, I'm so grateful. Yeah. 
G-L-O-R-I-A, Gloria. <laughs> I'm really happy. Um, <laughs> so thank you for coming and for being here today. I'm so, uh, I'm so grateful. So um, that's my little testimonial for Thank today. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. And we're so excited that Gloria is here. Um, so are you ready to, for us to, for the big reveal of what the campaign goals are this year? Yeah. All right. So how many pledgers are we looking for this year? We're looking for 198 pledgers. It says 195, but we've been treating and affirming every week for 198 pledgers or more. Or more. And, and what, what kind of dollar amount are we looking for, Cindy? We're looking for $895,000 and more. And let's, let's, let's affirm this together, whether you're online or whether you're here, we know that setting that intention is the most powerful thing. And we want to blow past this goal in no time, just quickly. So let's say this together. How many pledgers? We want 198 pledgers and or more. more. 98. <laughs> I'm going to say it right. And then we want how much money? $895,000 or more. Very Great. Good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So each, uh, each week, our AIS committee meets and we, we pray and we pray to affirm the prosperity, the abundance, the wholeness, the health, and the lovingness of our community. And we affirm that in our hearts, in our minds, and set that into the universe so that it manifests for all of you and all of us and for everyone that we're connected to. So with that, Cindy will take us out on a prayer treatment. All right, let's just take a moment to go within into that quiet place, into that place of the divine, knowing that the infinite nature of the divine is everywhere present and is present right here, right now, is always present. Knowing the expansive nature of God there's no limits within God and there can be no limits within my life or anyone's life within this community or within CSL Dallas because the abundance in nature is all around us whether it be the stars and the galaxies that are always expanding or the grains of sand on a beach or the number of drops of water in the ocean there are no limits to the picture that can be painted in this universal substance. And so what I know is that all that I am and all that each individual in this community are, are one with the divine, that we cannot be outside of it. And so what I claim and I know for C.S. L. Dallas, and every individual in this community is that our canvas is expansive, that we are creating a joy-filled life, a love-filled life, a, a prosperous life, a beautiful life with no boundaries, no limits, in living color that all that we desire is made manifest, expanding, growing, just amazing lives. And community is in the center of that right here, right now. And so I sit in the gratitude of knowing all of this and more is expressing in our lives. And I let it go and let it be in gratitude and grateful celebration, we say, and so it is.